Touch ID and Face ID are part of the local authentication framework. So our code needs to do three things. First, check whether the device is capable of supporting biometric authentication, i.e. can it use Touch ID or Face ID. And keep in mind here that being capable means having a Touch ID sensor, i.e. The, the, the Touch ID ring or Face ID scanner, and being enabled for it. Has user enabled Touch ID or Face ID on their device? Because they're both optional. Second, if they are capable of supporting biometrics, we'll request that the system begin the check now, giving it a string containing the reason why we're asking. For Touch ID, that string comes from code. For Face ID, that string's written into our info property list file. And third, if we get success back from the request, it means this is the device's owner, so we can unlock the app. Otherwise, we'll show a failure message. Now, there's an important caveat you must be aware of before you write any code. When we're told whether Touch ID or Face ID was successful or not, it might not be on the main thread. This means we must use GCD to make sure we run any UI code on the main thread. Let's go ahead and write some code now. Back in Xcode, we have Authenticate tapped, and right now we just call Unlock Secret Message. Instead, we're going to use a local authentication framework to perform that biometric evaluation. So first, I'm going to scroll up and add an import for local authentication, which is what gives access to Touch ID and Face ID. Next up, down in Authenticate tapped, we're going to get access to a new context, which is an LA context, with the LA part being short for local authentication. Next, we'll get ready to store an error that might come back from local authentication if something goes wrong. Now, this is done in a very particular way because this is an Objective-C API, not a Swift API. So we've got to pass in the Objective-C form of errors, like this. We'll say var error is an NS error, optional, like that. And that is the Objective-C form of a Swift error type. Now I've made it a variable because we're going to pass that to the local authentication framework. And if it goes wrong, it will fill that value with what went wrong. We can then read that error message out and act upon it. So the first thing we'll say is, can we use biometric authentication or not? We'll say, if our context dot can evaluate policy, and a policy in question here is dot device owner authentication with biometrics, like that. Can we try and use Touch ID or Face ID to authenticate the user? And for the error, what we want to do is pass in that exact error we just made. Pass in this error here. And you'll see the type is a particular type, NS error pointer. Now this thing here is an NS error. This is an NS error pointer. The difference is subtle, but important. This is the Objective-C equivalent of Swift's in-out parameters being used with functions. If you remember, an in-out Swift parameter gets modified inside the function, it stays modified outside the function as well. In Objective-C, we don't have in-out. Instead, what we want to do is point to a piece of RAM and say, over here is an empty object you can fill in with whatever value you want. And that is a pointer. In this case, it's a pointer to an NS error, which is this thing here, which is currently empty. So what we want to do is say, uh, this is where that error lives in RAM, Go ahead and fill that with your error. And the syntax for that is quite unusual. We write ampersand followed by error, like that, ampersand error. What that means is don't pass in the error itself. Don't just pass in that value. Pass in where that value is in RAM, the location of that in RAM, so it can be overwritten with a new value if something goes wrong. After that, we'll have an open brace. So if we can evaluate the policy, if we can use biometric auth, great, we'll say our reason string is identify yourself, like that. And now we'll ask it to try and actually use the policy biometric authentication. We'll say context dot evaluate policy. Our policy is the same thing again, dot device own authentication with biometrics. Our reason is going to be that reason. And the reply here, this is a closure telling us whether it worked or not. And if it didn't work, what the error was. I'll go ahead and delete that and use trailing closure syntax instead, like that. And again, it's passed in two values, which is success 
and an authentication error, like that. But also, we want to have access to self inside here, so I use a weak self capture list, like that. So we can modify self safely inside here. Inside this closure, we'll say a dispatch queue dot main dot async, i.e. push the work back to the main thread. If we are successful, awesome, call self question mark dot unlock secret message. We have successfully unlocked the device using touch ID or face ID. If we weren't successful, it means we've had some sort of error like that. If we're down here after this main first if like that, we have no biometry available to us. We can't use face ID or touch ID. Now, the reason this thing's a closure, this whole thing, the callback, uh, it's a closure because it takes time. User has to sort of look at the screen and you know focus their eyes on the screen or press their finger over the touch ID sensor. It takes time. You don't want to block the main thread while that's happening. So it's a closure. It runs asynchronously somewhere else. Now this identify yourself reason up here, that is shown only to folks who use touch ID on their devices. If you want face ID, that's handled differently. That's got to be a key in the property list. So let's add that now. I'll go to info.plist, right click in this big space here and choose add row. And for the name, I'm going to scroll down to privacy and look for face ID usage description and choose that key. And for the value, it should be the same really. So I'll say identify yourself, exclamation mark, like that. Now that's enough to get basic biometric authentication working, but there are error cases we have to try and catch. For example, there's an error down here if we don't have biometric authentication enabled, or it's not possible. Similarly, we'll get an error if the user failed authentication, which might be for any reason. Perhaps they're wearing uh, reflective sunglasses, for example, who knows. But also the system has to cancel scanning for some other reason. Now to catch authentication failure errors, we're going to modify this error comment here. If we fail to authenticate, we, you know, we can authenticate, but it didn't work. In that area, we'll say let AC equal the UI alert controller with the title being authentication failed, a message being you could not be verified. Please try again. And the preferred style, we'll just use an alert. Then we'll add an action to that. UI alert action with the title, okay. Style default, and then uh, no handler. So just go ahead, oops, easy, and uh, dismiss the alert controller straight away, like that. And then uh, we're gonna present that in our view controller, of course, we'll do self question mark dot present AC animated, true. This is for times when they have access to face ID or touch ID, it just didn't work for some reason. We also have an error down here. If there's no biometric authentication possible, i.e. no touch ID or face ID configured or available. In this case, we'll say, uh, let AC equals a new alert controller with the title biometry unavailable. Uh, message will be uh, your device is not configured for biometric authentication. Preferred style, still alert. Then I'll just thieve these two lines up here, uh, adding the action and presenting it. Uh, it's not going to have the closure so we can get rid of this whole self question mark stuff as it required anymore. And I'll just show an alert if they have no access to face ID or touch ID. And that completes the authentication code. Let's give it a try now. I'll run it back in the simulator. There we go, authenticate. I press that now. You'll see unavailable, it's not configured by default for biometric authentication. I press OK. Now in the simulator, you can go up to the hardware menu here and look for face ID and then choose enrolled, which means assume this user has got authenticated uh, face for face ID. They've already trained the system to recognize their face. And I press enrolled and authenticate again, the face ID box pops up. That's where you sort of see a spinning animation normally. I'll choose hardware again, face ID, and then matching face. Successfully passed the test. And now you see secret stuff and hello appears. 
if I go out and in again, like that, Water Authenticate, and then Hardware, Face ID, non-matching face. You failed the test. Perfect. There's a message there saying you failed. Of course, in a real device, you'll have actual Face ID and Touch ID working correctly. You have to do that same hardware menu stuff.